Hello everyone, welcome to Gossip Works. My name is James and today I'll be starting off a new layout. Uh, this one is more aimed towards anyone who's new to the hobby of model trains. So specifically this will be a N-Gates uh, layout, but anything which I'll be saying it can be you know, used in any of the uh, gauge sizes. So um, first thing I would actually recommend is picking up a uh, no plan book which will tell you know shows you, you know, various uh, layouts and that lot. I'll be using the Pico set track N gauge plan book because I'll be making my uh, no, beginning layout out of uh, set track. So here's the little book and this also doesn't just tell you plans and that lot it also gives you helpful guides on actually building the layout as well. Uh, if I quickly zoom out a little bit just to give you a bit more view. Uh, it just gives a little brief in, in, uh, brief overview of Engage, along with showing you all the set track pieces, along with you know, where to keep a layout, uh, how to build the baseboard, which I'll be showing off uh, in this video. Uh, also, you know, bits of track formations and that lot. Uh, wiring the layout, which will be quite important uh, for the next uh, video which I'll be doing, which is um, I'll be doing this as a DC layout, so it'll be specifically designed just for DC operation. So I have got an idea on how to do that. But um, this also shows you how you know, points and all that lot, and also landscaping. I'll be using the uh, usual method which I do, which is paper mache and cardboard. So, but uh, following on, it does give you example layouts uh, using the uh, starter set track. A little pack which you can get here. I think that costs about 60 odd pound and maybe a bit off in pricing now. But it does show you what you can do with just the uh, set track uh, starter set and how to expand on it. So, and then it gives you examples of you no know, further along of you know, what you can do with set track. So, I won't be building anything quite this big actually. Um, but uh, yes, I would re definitely recommend any newbie to the hobby to get yourself a plan book and just have a read through it. Even if you're not going to build anything this big, it does give you ideas of what to do uh, when you do want to build a layout. So, but, uh, yeah, just skip for it. It does say lots and lots of layouts. And at the end, it does give you some exact. Ooh. Sample layouts of smaller layouts. Um, <laughs> well, this one's a fairly nice one, but um, I won't be doing any of that because I've already read this many times and I have already designed myself a layout, though not finished designing it. Uh, this is using XTrackCAD, which is a free uh, software which you can also use on any uh, operating, operating system. It does take a little bit to set up, but after you set it up, you can basically build. Uh, your layout as you want. Uh, even though this layout isn't any of the ones which are shown in the plan book, it does have features which will be important to try out. So like I said, I've got a basic loop, I've got a enter end which is there to there, and also I've got a little shunting area which, no, um, I said all of these features you, know, you could use to build up your own layout. But uh, with this layout it will be a two controller uh, no, layout so you've got a control point here and a control point here and from this control point you basically control the shunting area and from this control point you control both the loop and also if you put the points in the right position you can control the end to end and that's what I'll be doing but the first thing first is to build the actual baseboard so I'll quickly cut and show you all the pieces which I've got so it's in a sec right here we are with all our bits of wood and also some various tools to help us with it uh, first of all, I'll just say that I ha was fortunate to get a piece of wood which is actually the right size which I want, which I'd say is preferable if you can do that, otherwise you'll need to do some cutting. But uh, yes, this is 9mm uh, MDF, uh, may not be suitable for all uh, modelling needs because sometimes you'll be putting this out somewhere where the wood would ex no, get wet and expand, however this will be inside and it'll be... Uh, fairly no stable no amount. Uh, the other wood which I've got is a uh, what's it um, 
uh, I think it's two inch by, it's not one inch, so it's about one centimetre, but um, basically long spars of wood. This will be used for the bracing around the outside and also the spar in the middle, which I'm actually using uh, this bit, which is a cut off from uh, when I was doing the bottom port. But um, yeah, so I said this is two foot by three foot, uh, or in metric terms, it's actually uh, 600 by 900 millimeters. And uh, that's probably the best way you'd be able to uh, order it in millimeters. So uh, the other tools which I've got, if I just sit down a minute, is a saw, this is a coping saw, but any saw which will cut for wood will be suitable. Uh, I've also got my little hand drill, which you can get cheaply on Amazon, but um, yeah, I'll be using that to drill out the holes for when I uh, put all the screws in. I've got a pen, which is always useful. Uh, these are clamps, there's two whole bits of wood, which I'll show you in a minute what I uh, use them for. And also, since I'm a little bit cack handed, uh, I'll be using my electric uh, screwdriver, but a normal screwdriver will actually be, no, to be just as useful. But um, yeah, it's so a bit cack handed, so I don't want to put the screws in a silly angle. So, um, yes, the first thing which I tend to do is that's one which I've already cut up, so I'll put that over there. So, on this piece, since my uh, long spars of wood are a little bit uh, bendy in the middle just so that I can make them straight well I'm cutting them I can make them straight I tend to lay them out like this and just clamp them on like that in at least three spots Ooh, and I need a bit of wood right there I am still back here <laughs> Can't do it with the left hand. There we go. And just line it up just so that when it's all clamped down, you've got the length which you need right here, and that's what the pen is for. And what you do is just mark out on the wood where you're cutting. And I did have a uh, ruler to do this beforehand, so I'll just be using a bit of scrap wood. Just to do the other sides. And then finally on the back, just matching up where the lines are. And there we go. And that's it all marked off. And um, yeah, then you're pretty much ready to cut. Uh, this is also good, uh, this setup is also good if you you haven't got a uh, so I can't remember what now, a workbench, you know, with a clamp in the middle, or if you just want to make sure that your cuts are more straight, just use, you know, basically, uh, where's the bit which you're about to cut in between some scraps of wood, like this, on either side, and use that as a guide for when you're cutting. Uh, since I don't really want to drag this downstairs, I'll be cutting it in my bedroom, like I normally do. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to have a quick cut now, and get all this wood all cut up and ready for assembly. So um, yes, I'll see you in a bit. Keep, keep forgetting to put the microphone on, but um, yes, that was a lot of hard work cutting all that lot up. Um, but uh, yes, uh, one thing which I did forget to point out is when doing these side uh, lengths, uh, just to get the right length which you need, because you would actually need a bit less than the um, no, total side, is just get some scrap bits of wood or just the two long spars put them side by side, put them at the bottom, then clamp, no, measure it from there, then you have the same width as, um, uh, same width as what you need, no, minus the two end bits, so something like that, put it at the bottom, measure it like that, then you get the right length. Anyway, <sighs> a bit knackered today. Um, <laughs> anyway, now it's time for the drilling because we just put all the um, screws in. I haven't got enough screws, but I've got enough to do the job. So uh, ideally you'd want to put two screws in each uh, spot, but I'm only using one. So uh, one thing which I ha would recommend is, uh, since you'd want to um, drill from the other side and screw it in, just so you know where 
uh, to actually know where the beams are in that lot. Get a pencil, or in my case a mechanical pencil, and just sketch out roughly where the uh, spars are on that lot. And then this will be the top side. So where you've drawn all these lines, that will be the top of the board. Uh, also do, do the same on the ends for the outside spars, because you'd want to actually know where to drill. So, not too sure if you can see, actually you probably can't see, but I have drawn a line here, so I know where the width of this beam is on here. And basically just like, put it some way. You're not going to drill through something else. Find the middle and just, I've not got that uh, thing on straight. After that, and just basically drill some guide holes. Need them for there just so it doesn't come off with me. Right. Uh, do the same on the other end. This is just so that when you're uh, screwing them in, you don't have as much work to do. I'm hopefully, you're not going to drill into the floor. Oh, I haven't, that's good. Pants would kill me if I did that. Um, <laughs> but um, yes, I recommend doing this to no, the two outside beams and also for, what's it, uh, for the middle spar. So this is what I do just get a pencil, roughly draw in pen, no, where it will live on the other side. I said the reason I'm using pencil instead of pen is so that when I'm doing scenic work I can just rub this out and then I've got a nice clean uh, board again. Unfortunately this beam is a bit wonky so it's a bit uh, it at least tells me roughly where the uh, beam is so I swap that around so I don't have to work out Anything complicated? That's what it is. Go through there. There we go. It's a nice new holes. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to carry on with this and then glue it all together. I suggest it's getting a little pot of glue and just a simple brush. So, yes, I'll see you in a bit.
Well, that's a lot more hard work than I thought. And I poured myself a bit too much glue, but uh, oh well, it's only PVA, so. Anyway, now that. Sorry. Hot day. Uh, exercise. Oh, it's probably called this. Um, <laughs> so, so um, yes, I'd recommend let it dry, then it's pretty much ready to build on. So, I'll see you after it's all dried. Well, here we are with all the baseboard all completed off. I uh, would recommend you know, any scrap bits of wood you've got, uh, keep them to the side. You may find a use for them. Uh, I normally find a use for them. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much all done now, uh, apart from like, erasing all the uh, pencil lines. But other than that, there is only one thing which you could do, which is add a cork uh, sheet on top or any other kind of insulation on top. Uh, this is just to help reduce the sound of the engine on the uh, vibrating on the baseboard. However, I'm still a bit hit and miss of if I really no, want to add that because uh, it's a bit extra work to do it. But uh, and I'm still trying to work out if the benefits you know, outweigh the cons. Um, if you do want to do it yourself, you no, know, get a cork sheet big enough or you no, know, cut one to size or make one to size anyway and then just basically add lots of glue and i do mean lots of glue put down the cork then weigh it down either using you know, various heavy things which you've got around the house or uh, if it's possible flip the board over and use the board as a weight itself then put some more weight on the other side this helps uh, spread out the weight so it's a bit more even down but uh, yeah, I might leave it off because it's a bit difficult getting cork the right size for me. Um, and yeah, I figured I'd get my train set out and just run a little train round. So, uh, yeah. Mm. I'll have a bit of a rest now because like I said it's still warm even though it's cloudy. But, uh, yeah. I think I'll just enjoy my little 4F going round. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was you know, helpful for anybody who's starting off in the hobby and next time we'll be looking at doing all the wiring and also the um, track building. So yeah, I'll see, I'll see you all later. Take care now, bye bye.